Okay, it's time for the next episode on chemical weapons and how to protect yourself from them. And today we're going to be looking at one of the nastiest chemical weapons of them all in terms of actually what it will do to you. Um, it's not actually that efficient at killing. Well, we'll be going into that because I'm going to be covering more than one gas in this video. This video is going to be about blister agents. And blister agents, the one that's most famous is mustard gas or sulfur mustard. And we're going to primarily look at that in this video, but we'll also look at lewisite, and there are a couple of others, but we'll just be looking at mustard and lewisite because they're the most famous. Lewisite being the most effective, mustard being the most widely used. So, what are they as a warfare gas? Well, as far as I'm aware, sulfur mustard or mustard gas is only actually used as a chemical weapon. weapon. It's not a toxic industrial chemical that you'd actually have some sort of use for in civilian industry, it's only produced as a weapon. What it does is on skin contact it causes chemical burns. Um, so any amount of exposed skin at all will result in chemical burns resulting in blisters and boils and things like that, skin damage. If it gets into your eyes it can cause temporary blindness of swollen eyelids and things like that. Um, and then if you get enough in your eyes it can lead to blindness where it destroys the eye. So not very nice stuff. Now, you can die from inhalation of mustard gas, but weirdly it's not that effective at killing through inhalation. Um, if you inhale enough, yes, it will kill you because it blisters all your lungs, but for the most part it will just cause you a lot of pain and not necessarily kill you. It's nowhere near as effective at killing as phosgene is, for example, that was also used in World War One. Now, mustard is sort of scary because you need to have full body protection on to actually not encounter the effects of it. So if you were to protect yourself from it, you'd first need a respirator on, and then you'd need a full body chemical suit on as well. I'm not going to put that on for the sake of this video, but yeah, you'd need full body protective gear on. You could, you know, obviously improvise that with raincoats and things like that, but the point is you need waterproofs on that are going to stop the fluid touching your skin. Now, the weird thing is with mustard gas is it can apparently take up to 24 hours from contact with the chemical in your skin or inhaling it before it actually starts causing you injury. Now, I have no idea why this is. There's a big, long scientific explanation on Wikipedia if you want to read into it, but as I said, I'm not a chemist or a biologist, so I want to know that the stuff's bad and how to protect yourself from it, but not necessarily why it takes a day um, once you've been exposed to it for it to affect you. Now, if you did know that you'd been affected, what you'd need to do is get rid of your clothes as quickly as possible. The issue is with mustard is it soaks into your clothes, the chemical sort of vapour from it, if it soaks into your clothes, you're actually permanently having more of the stuff touching your skin. So that's apparently a mistake lots of soldiers have made in the past. They've got their clothes soaked with mustard gas, then it's touching their skin and they're inhaling vapours coming off of their clothes without realising it, uh, leading to be much more likely to die or be more severely wounded than if they'd have, you know, pulled the clothes off straight away and uh, evac the area or decontaminated themselves. So, yeah, mustard gas, quite nasty stuff, obviously. Uh, you don't want it to touch your skin or inhale it. But blister agents got even nastier when something called lewisite was made. And what lewisite was, was essentially a nastier version of mustard gas. So lewisite generally causes instant effects when it touches you. I don't think it's actually that similar a chemical. They're both blister agents. They do the same thing, but they're not, you know, the actual same chemical family as far as I understand. But what lewisite does, it touches your skin and then immediately it starts causing chemical burns and chemical damage to your skin. Now, inhalation like mustard gas seems to be quite inefficient at killing, but if you inhale enough it will kill you. The scarier thing is with lewisite, that if you have enough contact with it on your skin, as well as the damage it will actually do to your skin itself, it will cause um, kidney failure from what I can understand, either liver or kidney failure from the chemicals actually getting into your blood uh, bloodstream once they go into your skin, um, and then killing you that way. So it can actually kill through skin contact rather than just being very unpleasant through skin contact. Now, both lewisite and mustard, from what I can understand, sulfur mustard, um, will actually very likely, uh, very likely to give you cancer um, if you come into contact with them. The damage it will do to your skin is very likely to result in skin cancers or other cancers um, from the damage to all the cells it does on contact with you. So again, really nasty stuff. If you were injured and survived it, in the short term, it might get you in the long run, both of them. So really nasty chemical agents. It's obviously obvious why they are banned. Now, the sad thing is, mustard went on being used long after World War I. It was used in some of the interwar wars. 
it was used in Asia throughout World War II, it wasn't actually used in the European theatre in World War II other than when a ship carrying mustard agents was bombed and released it, poisoning lots of people. Um, but it was also used by Iraq in the Iran Iraq War, um, Saddam used it when he was ethnically cleansing the Kurds. So there's lots of, um, you know, it, times mustard has been used, Appar apparently ISIS is using it now. So mustard is one of those gases I think that's quite easy to make if the person has some sort of slight knowledge of chemistry and some basic equipment. But it can do a lot of damage, so it's one of those agents, while, while it's banned under international treaties, it will still keep getting used because of how easy it is to use it. Now apparently Britain in World War II did develop a cream that you could put on your skin that was very good at stopping blister agents. I guess the cream reacted to the blister agent when it touched you. Uh, again, I don't know loads about them or how they work because I'm not a chemist. I don't understand the science of all the neutralizing agents. But supposedly you know, Britain did find a way that you could make anti-blister agent cream that you could give to soldiers to put on their skin or apply it to their skin after contact very quickly and that would, you know, reduce the majority of the damage from it. But obviously, as said, your main method of protection is a full-face respirator with a filter, and obviously, a full-on chemical suit. Either a rubberized or charcoal-lined one would do, but you do not want the stuff touching your skin. So, that's the video on mustard gas and blister agents and how to protect yourself from them. But yeah, a respirator in a full body suit and get out of there straight away. If you do realise you've come into contact with it, obviously what you're going to need to do is ditch your clothes that you're in because they're going to be soaked in it and get decontaminated. I don't know if running regular water over you would help get rid of it, but, you know, I guess go to a hospital if applicable straight away and let a trained doctor deal with it. But yeah, mustard gas and blister agents are very nasty and you're going to need quite a serious amount of protection to actually not be affected by them. A mask itself is not enough. If you only had your mask on and no um, chemical suit on or waterproof clothing, all the rest of your body is going to be blistered up, red raw, and then eventually you'll die of cancers or blood poisoning through the uh, chemicals touching your skin.